you know, when I was looking at this lesson, it was just so very beautiful, so very peace-filled. And I thought, oh, this is just a nice lesson. It's just a nice lesson. It's a nice thought. Uh, and more and more what I am finding in everything that I am reading of, about the Course, it's always been there, but it's always telling us these thoughts that we hold in our minds are not just for us. This is for everyone. This thought embraced and held within our minds is for the healing of this planet. It's not just about us. And yet it's hard for us to grasp how we can heal this planet. And so the Course wisely says, this is for you. So hold this intimately for you and realize the power that this is in your life. And then recognize that you are not alone. And that as you hold this in your mind, as you take these moments of peace, you're making an incredible difference in the lives of all your family and friends who are going through challenges, of those you may never know, of strangers, of people who are, as the Course would say, yet to be born and those who have passed on. So to think that life begins with a body or ends when a body is no more is arrogance. Life is eternal. I was as we come up to this 50th anniversary of the, of the birth of A Course in Miracles, which actually took place. The Course actually began in October of 1965. Uh, Helen, before that, though, in the summer of 1965, after the commitment of Bill and Helen to find this better way of the story, and I'm going to come to the conference. I've got a lot of stuff to tell you about this. But I was reading a lot of her, um, a lot of her journal in the past few days just looking at some of these stories and of course when they had that commitment to find a better way she began to have a lot of visions a lot of spiritual visions and Helen was a self-proclaimed militant atheist so uh, she was not a uh, anybody who you would think of with any sort of spiritual visions now if there was a, a background with her it was Judaism but she wasn't raised with that so the visions that were very spiritual in nature in many cases had Jesus in them was kind of discouraging right then and there. So it's like, what in the heck are you doing here? Uh, that's not where I come from. That's not my background, if I even had a background. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to read all of this, these challenging events in her life, and then to see that even in the midst of when these events, these visions were somewhat challenging to her, they were also peace-filled. She would get these little moments of great peace in them. And one of them was, she said she was sitting at a mirror combing her hair and all of a sudden she saw this image of this golden line. And she said, in the midst of this long golden line that seemed to go on forever, there was a slight dip, just almost insignificant, this little dip. And she said, the voice told her or this image of this voice in her mind was that's your life right now that's life this experience of life is that little teeny dip and there's so much more that has been and so much more that is to come this as important as it seems to you with all of your challenges and all of your problems and all the drama that is going on in your life is so small in the scheme of your existence and she said at that moment she felt such peace. Is that all this is? Ah, it's okay. I can handle that. And for Kellen, that was a big deal because what was to come with A Course in Miracles was a pretty big deal for her. And she had no idea what it was. But to realize that this moment that we are going through with all the trauma and all the drama is just a small blip in the grand scheme of things. So if that is true, then it's time for us to enjoy this existence right here, right now. You know, it's time for us to realize what truly abides within us and to embrace this. Now, I know a lot of you, we talked about this last week, why we don't embrace this truth, why we don't embrace eternal holiness abides in us. Why is that not the default? You know, when, you're, when you open up your Word document, in a computer, in a, in a word processing, look, I don't tell any, I'm not the technical person, but I do know it defaults like to a typeface or it defaults to a point size, right? You know, so you start typing, it's usually times Roman, 12 point, right? Or Arial or something, 12 point. It just defaults to that. If you want to change it, you got to go in there and change it. You know, you got to make a change. The fact is, the truth about us is eternal holiness abides in us. God loves us. That's the truth. That is the default. We've gone in and made some changes. We've monkeyed around with the system. That's what we have done. 
Like I said last week, why is it easier for you to believe in a God whose child would disobey him by eating an apple and he'd kick him out of, of heaven, out of paradise, and keep kicking him for the rest of his life? Why does that make more sense to you than God loves you? The default should be God loves you. That's the truth. During all of the changes we've made to our computer programming, that is the truth. And that's why this lesson is so powerful. Eternal holiness abides in me. That's our default. That's our reality. This is what we should walk with. This is what we should be affirming. This is what should be the thought that enters our mind as the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. That is our reality. And hopefully many more times along the way. And that we give that, we rest in that, not only for the benefit of us, but for the benefit of all mankind. I'm sure you're like me. You look at the world and you go, oh, I wish I could do something. You know, there's so much going on in this world. What can I do? And the Course would say the most important thing you can do is to find peace in this moment. And if you find peace in this moment, then you'll find it in the next moment, in the next moment, in the next moment, and soon you will be at peace. Look at the Dalai Lama. What does he do? I don't see him at any world councils. Now, sometimes he presents at some of them. But what does he always say? Does he come up with ways to talk with the Russians when they are invading small countries? Does he come up with the ideal plan for health care in this country that we cannot seem to get over, a health care plan? Does he, does he talk to people about the new peace treaty with Iran or the nuclear ban? No, he doesn't do any of that. But why do we keep going back to him? Because he talks about peace. That seems to be important, that he holds peace in his mind for the world. And we come back to him because in the midst of all that he's gone through, he got kicked out of a country. He lost a country, you know. He still focuses on peace. You know, so holding this thought of peace and this thought of peace being our default makes so much more sense than what we believe now. But the reason why it doesn't make any sense to us most of the time, it doesn't make sense to our egos, our e we don't want to look. We don't look. <laughs>